Hey team, my name is Clint Hoagland. Welcome back to Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last video, we talked about how to open a sample in Chuck and play it back. In this tutorial, we're going to use samples to make our own custom drum machine using what's called if statements. First, like always, we have to set up our sound chains. This time, instead of a single sound, we're going to have four of them. This does mean we're going to need four times the code to make our drum machine happen. As far as I know, you have to do all these steps for every sample. If you figure out a way to get out of it, please leave it in the comments. First, let's define four sound buffers and send them to the deck. We want one called kick, one called snare, one called C hat, and one called O hat. Next, like last time, we need to tell Chuck where to find the files on disk. We do that by pointing them to me.dir parentheses, and then adding the file name of each sample. For this lesson, I provided a link in the description to a zip file in my GitHub repo containing samples you can use if you want. I recorded these from a Boss DR660 that I bought 20 years ago for, if I recall correctly, $50. In 2020 dollars, that would have been about 75 bucks, which is an incredible value considering how much I use it over the years. Anyway, once you've got those files downloaded and copied to the same folder as your Chuck file, and you've built up your file names like so, chuck those file names to the read property of each of the corresponding sound buffers. Now, if we were to chuck any time to now, all of these would start playing at once. Recall from our last lesson that sending a file name to a sound buffer's read property makes it play right away. To stop that from happening, let's make a function called silence all buffers, and in there we're going to chuck the number of samples in each buffer to its own position parameter, which we call POS. That tells the buffer that the sound is over and to stop playing. Having made that function, let's call it before we do anything else so that when the music starts, we have to choose to start any of these buffers. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is write a function that will act as our drum machine. We do this using a technique I like to use called programming by wishful thinking. The way it works is I write my code by pretending that a function already exists even though it doesn't. This helps me define my function in terms of how it will be used, which helps me make the function work exactly the way I need it to. So let's imagine what our drum machine would do if it existed. I think the first thing I'd want it to do is lay down a 4x4 kick drum pattern, just going donk, 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 donk. That should be simple to do, and simple is usually a good way to start. So I'm going to type drum parenthesis 0 comma beat, then copy it three times for a total of four. This means that I'm going to call a function four times, even though it doesn't exist yet. Now I forgot to define a beat before, let's call half a second a beat. So the way this drum method gets used, it takes some sort of selector that starts with zero, and it takes a duration that will govern how long it plays that selection. Let's make our function now. It's called drum, and it takes an int called select, and it takes a dir called duration. The first thing we want to do is chuck that duration to now. Now if we launch our file, it should take two seconds to complete because we called it four times. Now, we said we wanted zero to mean a kick drum. We do that by using an if statement, which works like this. We type if, then parentheses, then a statement that evaluates to true or false. If that statement is true when the flow of control passes by the if statement, it executes the code in the block that comes afterward. If the statement is not true, it skips it. We said zero means kick drum, so if we type if parens select equals equals zero, chucks zero to kick.pos, this will restart the kick drum. Because a 4x4 pattern would also have a closed hi-hat on every beat, let's chuck zero to that too. Now, you might be asking, what is the difference between one equals sign and two? The answer is that in Chuck, the equals operator is for assignment and the double equals is for checking equality. You don't use the assignment operator very much in Chuck because it has the Chuck operator, but it is still modeled after the C-based languages that also use double equals as the operator that checks to see if two things are equal. This can be a bit of a gotcha when testing to see if you should drop into the block of an if statement because if you forget and use a single equals, you'll assign that variable that value rather than checking it. Try not to do this because this error is very, very hard to see once you've done it. Remember to use the double equal in your if check. To keep things from getting sloppy, let's call our silence all buffers method after chucking our duration into now. This will stop all the sounds again once the call ends. There are times you might not want to do this, but for now let's try it. Okay, let's play our song. Okay, that didn't work the first time, and the reason why was because I forgot to put in fun void when I was defining my drum function. Let's try this again. All right, that worked. We heard the kick drum four times. Now let's add an open hi-hat in between each of these. We change the kick call to half a beat, and then we call a drum with a one, also with half a beat. Now one doesn't exist yet in our drum machine, but we now know exactly what to do. We add an if statement where select double equals one, and in that block we chuck zero to the position of the open hat. 
Play it again, and now we can hear our hi-hat. Let's replace our third and our second to last call to drum with a call that calls two and make another case in there. And this one will also chuck zero to our snare drum. Now let's play it back. So now what we have here is a classic house loop. We can put a while loop around it and play it forever. For fun, let's replace that with a kind of an electro loop and replace the snare drum with a clap. So you can see how easy it is to make a function that can behave however you want. This chooses between samples, but you can use this pattern to make some kind of choice along with iteration for all kinds of things. Now the one thing that you might be scratching your head about at this point is how to play more than one thing at a time. You've seen how to make a lot of individual sounds, but not how to fit a bunch of different sounds together. Not to worry, in our next tutorial we will be discussing exactly that. In this tutorial, we used if statements to make a simple drum machine. In our next tutorial, we'll talk about playing multiple things at the same time using shreds.